it's recording. All right, so uh, my name is uh, Mark Resimius, and I uh, am here with... I'm Eleonora, and I'm super excited to do this chat with you because I feel like it's so great that we have two generations talking, and I can't wait to see what God can do through our conversation. Absolutely. Well, we should uh, bow our heads and pray and, and uh, give it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We give you thanks for this time that Eleanor and I have to share on these topics and things that we'd like to talk about. And Lord, we just ask that all this will just Lord, and that Lord, that we do not um, get off any anything that doesn't um, evolve you, Lord. And this is all about you. We just give you thanks. We give you praise. And Lord, we just pray that not only uh, will it touch Eleanor, Lord, but uh, and I, but other people that are listening and watching, Lord. We just give you thanks and praise in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think today um, I'd like to talk about a couple of topics. Um, uh, obviously, you'd like to talk about the COVID-19 that's, that's kind of going on. You know, we're all kind of stuck in our homes and, mm -hmm. and waiting to get out. And, uh, and uh, I think talking about the different, uh, how it affects the different generations uh, is a good thing that we can talk about. Um, and, you know, I think one of the most important things that people at this, you know, during all this stuff that don't, they don't understand is why is, why does God allow this stuff to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's worldwide or within our own um, personal lives. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I'll touch a little bit on, you know, taking out a, God out of our lives and those schools and governments and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. A sin aspect, but I think most importantly, what Eleanor, I really want to talk to you about is hope, the hope that mm -hmm. we have. And we, all these bad things that we have going on, but it, it compares to nothing to what he can do. Mm -hmm. you know, the hope, um, he is our savior. He's our king. He hung on a cross and gave us so much grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to talk about those certain things. Yeah, that is so true. And I love how, you know, you said that God is allowing these things. And that means that it's not out of God's control. Like God is not surprised by the situation. He's not scared of it. He's mm -hmm. not like, oh, what do we do now? Because God has yeah. a plan for us that's not that does not depend on however we're feeling or whatever changes in our world because our changes are not surprising to God. And I'm so glad that we get to share some hope with people and we get to show them that God still got us and he still cares about us and he has this figured out. Yeah, and I think as a born again Christian, we realize that it's already finished. He already has it. Okay. It's already planned, you know. Mm -hmm. He knows the end result. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, born again Christians, we need to just have the hope in that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is COVID-19? You know, that's a thing that uh, maybe some people don't know. Um, uh, on February 11th in 2020, the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, announced an official name for the disease um, that is causing, you know, this virus, this outbreak. Uh, first, it had identified, in, and I'm going to botch this because it's in China, it's, uh, Wuhan. I'm going to call it Wuhan, China. Do you? Yeah, I think it was Wuhan. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got how many different languages, so you might know better than me. <laughs> um, I try. Was, I try. Yeah. It was identified in Wuhan. I'm going to go with Wuhan, China. Yeah. Um, so uh, the new name of this disease uh, is uh, coronavirus disease, um, abbreviated as uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, CO stands for the corona part, and the VI stands for virus, and D for disease, just to mm -hmm. kind of break it down. Yeah. Uh, formally, and I, I think, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I was just going to say, formally, um, it was referred to as the 2019 uh, novel corona, but coronavirus or the two, 2019 NCOV is all I was going to say about that. So, yeah, um, I was going to say it's good. I'm glad that we can explain it because a lot of people know the name. They don't know what the name means or why we're using that name. So um, I'm glad that we can give some clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, along going with that, knowing the name of it, you know, how does it affect us? You know, is another big question. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it definitely affects the uh, respiratory system. Mm -hmm. 
when it uh, when the virus enters the body, it starts to attack like right away. Mm -hmm. Fevers, coughs, um, you know, uh, other like flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we've learned through this is that uh, you know if you're in the older generation or if you have a um, not a very good immune system or respiratory yeah. issues, it really can affect you a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad there is social distancing to make sure that people are not spreading the virus as fast as they would if we just lived our lives normally. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's true. And, you know, we, we do got to be safe. And, you know, I think the other aspect of it is, you know, if we do what we were taught when we were children, you know, wash your hands, you know, and mm -hmm. spit on people, don't cough on people, <laughs> you know. And yeah. there are people in the world who don't think about that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, that's true yeah so you know th those are good cautions as people who don't have uh respiratory systems with issues or yeah. uh bad um immune systems that we can mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. can really kind of take advantage of it as far as Definitely. yeah um so it really kind of affects the upper respiratory system uh which includes the nose the mouth um so that's where it starts, I should say, is it like in the mm -hmm. nose, the mouth, um, the larynx, mm -hmm. and then, you know, down into your lungs. So mm -hmm. there's, there's some effects there. And then, of course, we all kind of know if you do get affected, you know, it can be deadly depending on your, yeah. your body. Um, and that's a lot true, of, yeah. A lot of people have recovered from it too as well. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, um, you know, I feel like one of the biggest things that, causes a lot of distress in people is that they look at the statistics for how many people are affected, how many people are dying from it, that they miss that aspect of people who are actually getting better and people who had been affected that have been healed. And I think that's one part that the media is really missing because that's the hope, like showing that there are people that can recover from this is something so important because it gives so much strength to the people that know others that are affected or even the people that just need something to keep them going you know like yeah. waking up every morning seeing so many people get infected more and more does draw like drain the person's mind and you know people look and they're like what's going on but it's good to show that there are better things going on there are people that are getting healed there are people that are um, getting better. There are some people that didn't even need to go to the hospital yeah. and God just healed them. So there is hope with that. Yeah. And, and talking to my neighbor yesterday, now that you say that, um, he feels like he had symptoms like back in, uh, November and, mm -hmm. and December, you know, his whole family were having all the symptoms mm -hmm. like COVID-19 is or has. Mm -hmm. and he yeah. said, my entire family, we felt like we had it. We don't know mm -hmm. because it wasn't he contested for it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it passed in the, his entire family and he uh, they're a little bit older as well too so yeah definitely something that we can you know get healed from yep mm -hmm. definitely yeah so um you know then you know the the other question too uh kind of arises is you know like why does you know things that i hear out you know in in the world is you know why why is this being allowed where I, mm -hmm. I read an article today actually um, I'm sorry, I didn't read the article. I saw the top, uh, the headlines, mm -hmm. and people are all around the world are going, "Well, where is God? Where is yeah. God in this?" Well, let's talk about a little bit about that. Let's talk about a little bit exactly. why you know these things are being allowed in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, you know, first thing we have to realize, especially as born again Christians, is we know that this world is broken and it's been broken since Adam and Eve. Since Adam exactly, and Eve. that's true. Yeah. So what is your kind of take on that, you know, as, uh, as far as why, why things are like that happen? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, honestly, with that headline of where is God in all of this, it's so funny to see that now that it's a moment of panic, it's a moment where the general public is like scared of what's going on. They remember that God exists and that he does things for our good. But in moments where it's fine, we don't get headlines of where's God in all this because people think they can figure it out on their own and they think they only need each other. They need better politicians. They need better bosses. Yep. But now that something like this is happening, they're like, well, God, <laughs> you know? Yep. And um, I do think that God has been here 
the whole time and people are not noticing him, you know, because people are so used to seeing God's hand only when everything is fine that they have trouble noticing God's hand when things are not as great as they want them to be. But I do think that one reason why God would be allowing this is that he wants to show who he is and he wants to make a change. You know, like in moments like in history, because God has allowed pandemics to happen before, like with the children of Israel, when they were still in Egypt, God was like, to free them, there were so many, there was the plagues that were happening in Egypt. And that was because God wanted to accomplish his purpose. So I think this time has purpose. There's a reason why God is allowing this. There's something that God is wanting to do in our world that can only happen after this happens to us. And I think people need to actually see that God has been moving this whole time. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's absolutely correct. And I think you hit it right on there. Um, I think uh, for me, another reason that I think uh, would be why this stuff kind of gets allowed is, you, you know, it's mm-hmm. just obedience too. Uh, yes. You know, Moses will pro- proclaim the blessing of the following of Jehovah mm-hmm. to teach us, uh, to teach obedience. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And you can read that in Deuteronomy 28 talks about uh, promises to the children, the wealth, the food, and the safety. Um, and he also just, you know, he warns too, is if, if you refuse to listen or obey, you know, he'll curse them instead. And um, Jesus learned obedience, but not by sin. Let's exactly. know, learn that by sin, uh, mm-hmm. he learned that by suffering. Um, exactly. Uh, and, and in Hebrews uh, 5, 8, by the way, I like Hebrews. I hear it every morning because you know, my wife and I, you know, when we get up, you know, I always make mm-hmm. coffee and in those mornings that I don't feel like getting up, she goes, you know, it's scriptural that you have to make the coffee. And I'm like, well, why do you say that? She goes, well, Hebrews. <laughs> that is so funny. I love that. I might use that in my own life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to need my brothers to start doing the dishes. So Hebrews. Yeah, says how to do it. There you go. Gotta- <laughs> um, no, so um, but in uh, Hebrews five eight, I just want to read that real quick. I think it's pretty good. Uh, it says, "So also Christ glorified not himself to he." Uh, sorry, hang on. So, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he mm-hmm. who said unto him. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. You know, like um, the priesthood of Christ was planned by God from the very beginning, which meant the incarnation was uh, obviously necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, And though we were a son, yet we learned obedience by things in which he suffered. You know, Mm -hmm. it's another uh, good point on that you know i think exactly and even to add to that you know the night before jesus was um when was betrayed he went up to pray and he was like god can you take this cup away from me he was like i know i'm gonna suffer so much can you please take this away but then he catches himself and he goes not my will but yours be done and in that moment jesus was thinking about all the pain and suffering that he was gonna have but he knew that God was not going to let it happen for no reason. He knew that God had a plan and a purpose behind some things that hurt us. And that's why he caught himself and said, your will be done. Yep. And, and I, I think, yeah. I was going to say, and we could, we, I think that we should need to apply that, you know, even mm-hmm. as born again Christians, we need to apply that in our life in certain situations. Exactly. You know, but his will that is done. true. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like in so many situations, like I said earlier, We feel like we've got this until it's something that we know we don't got, you know? And that's when we're like, okay, now I need God because I can't do this. But as soon as it's something that is at my level again, I'll do it by myself. But God doesn't like that kind of pride in us because we're supposed to need God because it's his breath that we breathe. You know, it's yeah. God who has made us and we can't just be living our lives thinking we've got it all figured out until there's a pandemic and then we need God again. Because I feel like, you know, God opposes pride so obviously in the Bible. 
in, even in Second Chronicles 7.14, the Bible says, if my people on which my name is called humble themselves and pray, I will hear them from heaven. And the first step to God hearing them from heaven is that they had to humble themselves. They had to say, okay, God, we don't got this. We need you because we know that you figured it out. And I feel like that's something that God wants to see in us right now in this moment. Not just because it's a pandemic, but because it's a way of life. We need God to have it figured out because we can't. Yeah, I agree with that. And pride is the fall of man, you know. Mm -hmm. There's pride everywhere. Kind of touching on what you said a little bit earlier, and that is, you know, we think we can do it on our own. We think, you know, we have all this. And it kind of ties into what we talked about in the very beginning, where mm -hmm. then we run to God when we figure out we can't do it. You know, exactly. I mean? Pride that gets us to try to do it first. Mm -hmm. And that, 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 that's an issue, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I think along with the pride, um, you know, we have a, a lot of uh, adultery, uh, not adultery, but idolatry in this world. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. When we, it's kind of like pastor talk today and servants is putting what's before God, you know, a lot of, a lot of people is money's before God, you know, stuff mm -hmm. before God, I mean, mm -hmm. your car can be before God, uh, mm -hmm. looking in the mirror and, a, you know, look at me, look at me, you're putting mm -hmm. all these things before God. Exactly. And that, you know, he, that makes him very angry. You know, he's mm -hmm. a jealous God. Um, mm -hmm. And it, Jesus says in uh, Matthew six twenty four. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot, exactly. serve, um, you'll love one and hate the other. Um, mm -hmm. There's no way around that, you know, and it's very yeah. true. If you don't put God first, then mm -hmm. you know, you're putting something else before him. Whatever mm -hmm. tickles your ears or makes you happy and feel good inside. Because mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. is what makes you feel good inside. Mm -hmm. um, time and time again, God relented when his people learn to put him first. I mean, mm -hmm very merciful and graceful in that. Exactly. And you know, even in other places in the Bible, it talks about having divided loyalty where you feel like, okay, I'm going to bet like 50% on God and then 50% of something else because I feel like in case God fails, I still have this to fall back on. But yeah. the truth is when we choose to trust God, it's a full jump. It's not a, it's like falling off a cliff. You don't half fall. And you don't just go, okay, I'm going to just hold on a little bit. But in case God doesn't do it, I still have my money. Or in case God doesn't do this, I still have this person in my life. Because that's not how it works, you know. And if Jesus half died for us, we wouldn't have the benefits that we have now. So putting something else above God puts everything in question. Just because nothing else is as reliable as God is. Yeah, no, I think that that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like that. That was good. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I do. I think that was really good. And then, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> um, I, I guess one thing, you know, another thing too, uh, you know, is, you know, to defend his holiness, mm -hmm. you know, um, in Colossians 1, 20 through 22, it says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of mm -hmm. your behavior, but now he has, reconciled you uh by christ's physical body through the death mm -hmm. of you, holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation mm -hmm. and um that's mercy and grace right there i mean exactly you, know, you think about back in you know some of the things that you do and then you ask god to forgive you for your sins and mm -hmm. when he forgives you he throws them into the sea of forgetfulness mm -hmm. never be to remembered no more ever exactly we're pure and holy in the sight of God, mm -hmm. at least for that yeah. moment. We are sinful by nature, mm -hmm. you know. And, and honestly, what I love about that is that God has this gift that's already available. He has grace that's already there just for us to grasp. Because the truth is, and I love how the Bible presents grace, it's not something that we can earn. And it's not something that depends on what we do to get it. It's just there because God loves us so much that he's made his grace available. And I think one thing that God expects from us is that we are grateful for those things, for his grace daily, for yeah. being able to still be here and be alive. You know, God rejoices, and that's what Psalms 103 says, God rejoices 
in a grateful heart because he loves it when we're grateful. He loves it when we notice that he's been there. He loves it when we recognize his hand in our lives, no matter how small whatever happened is. Because, you know, tiny victories make up a very big reason to be thankful. You know, little things like waking up, breathing, walking, you know, so many things that we can do and we take for granted that we don't realize that God gives to us out of his, uh, out of his loving heart are things that we should be thankful for daily. Yep. I 100% I agree with that. And mm -hmm. I think it's as, you know, for me, um, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not thankful that I'm here, that I'm not yeah. thankful that I can breathe and that I can, you know, the things that he has blessed me with in my life. Um, mm -hmm. Just so thankful for that. And without him, none of it would be possible. None of it. Mm -hmm. um, you think about, you know, I think back in my life and the direction I was heading, but he saved me from that direction. You know, he yeah. put me up and, and, uh, you know, I can't be more, I don't even know how to think. I just can't wait to see him, Eleonora. I don't oh, know. Yeah. I don't know if okay. I'll cry. I don't know if I'll jump for joy, hug him, and he'll probably have to force me to release him. But, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, <laughs> Probably like, I've been waiting my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Can't I'm wait so, to stand real for Jesus. I cannot wait. I'm so excited for that day. It just keeps oh, me yeah. going every day. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about it is, you know, he knows the end result. So therefore, exactly. we as born again Christians don't have to worry about it, you know? That's true. That is so true. And you know, God is not only confident in the things that he's put inside of us, he's, con he's confident in his own ability to rescue us daily. Like yeah. God, in so many places in the Bible, like I know the story of, Gide of um, Gideon in Judges 6, when Gideon is like, okay, you're calling me a strong, mighty hero. I can't really do anything. God wasn't like, well, I'm just going to try to figure this out. He was like, I will be with you. Like, I'm enough. And God doesn't shake in his ability to defend and reveal his own power because he knows who he is. He knows his character. And he trusts that his word is available to us. So the more we read about him, the more we learn about who he is, we can start trusting in him just because of his character there's no one in the bible that has trusted god and god failed them and they were like well i'm gonna try something else right you know god knows who he is and that's why in the middle of a storm like in matthew 14 instead of saying okay disciples have no fear because the boat is made out of floating material he said fear not for i am with you yep. and i feel like in this moment it's important for us to realize that god is enough for us to not be scared of this um, pandemic. Yeah. And he didn't give us a spirit of fear either. Exactly. You know, that, that did not come from God. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think about, you know, Job and all the things that Job went through. I mean, if you're interested in knowing who had a terrible life, at, at certain oh, yeah. life read Job. It'll make you feel mm -hmm. good about the situation, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The result is God was in control of that. He only mm -hmm. allowed Satan to do um, what he wanted, but he didn't want uh, Satan to take Job's life. Do mm -hmm. anything you want, but don't take his life. God was still in control. He allowed mm -hmm. him to do that, you know. Exactly. That was to, uh, you know, see how faithful Job was to, to him, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. And honestly, I feel like that's the hope right there, that God is in control, that the devil cannot shake a finger on our lives because God has us into our life the bible says that we have been translated into his kingdom of light yep. so we are in this world but we don't belong to this world the devil can just wake up one morning and say okay i'm gonna make their life miserable yeah. and god is just gonna sit and watch you know god doesn't just sit up on his throne on his throne and watch us like we're an edge farm god is actively working every day into our lives he protects us every day and the devil does not have as much control as we think he does just because we've been translated into God's kingdom when we were born again with Jesus Christ. So I think the biggest hope that we can and the biggest hope that I can give is knowing that we belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to God. And the devil cannot just shake us however he wants because we don't belong to him. Yep. And, and the, the devil runs and trembles when he 
when you speak the name of Jesus. Exactly. You nothing to do with yeah. Jesus. He knows. Mm -hmm. the truth. He knows the truth. I hate saying this, but Satan knows the truth better than most born-again Christians. Oh, he, yeah. He knows mm -hmm. the Bible better than anybody in and out, just like Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and he knows that once, once we say his name in faith, Satan has to be gone. Exactly. Yeah. And Satan, and I love that. I heard a pastor say this once. We can't compare Satan to God because they're not equals. God is infinitely more powerful. Yeah. And we cannot just sit here and be like, well, it looks like the devil has more power now because this pandemic is not stopping. We need to open our eyes and realize that our God is working actively for our good. And we can notice it in our daily lives just by the simple fact that we're still here and we're still alive. Amen. And, yeah. and I, do think, uh, I do think a part of it too, Eleanor, is, you know, God allows these things to happen. You know, if you think about the history of America um, and just the world in general, you know, they, they've taken God out of so many things. That's um, true. And our, even in our own personal lives, you know, mm -hmm. and we take, when we put God on a shelf, what do we expect to happen? Exactly. So put in and says, I gotcha. You know, mm -hmm. I just think exactly. that it's very dangerous. And as a mm -hmm. born Christian, I, I, I pray every day that, you know, I keep walking in, in, in line with Jesus because I don't want to um, get into anything of the world where I'm putting God on a shelf. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And I think, I think with that too, there's a part, there's the part where when we take God out of our lives, that means we're making room for other things. And yeah. then we fill our lives with sin and we fill our lives with things that don't please God or honor him. But we are the type of people that, you know, need to be able to notice that if we take God out of our lives, we can't expect good to happen because the one who works for our good is God. And yeah. when we take him out and we start to create a good or a good version of us, it doesn't work because we're missing the piece that is supposed to bring the good. Right. And, you know, I guess that leads to this. What do we have to hang on to as born again Christians, Eleanor? I mean, well, <laughs> you know? that is true. And, you know, so many people think, well, the minute you become a Christian, you start missing out. But here's the thing. There's Jesus that God has sent for us. And that enough gives me so much hope. Jesus died for us, translated us into God's kingdom of light where the devil cannot just come and one day touch me and say, okay, now you're sick, you know? And yeah. every day walking and knowing that the God who made heaven and earth watches over me actively. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't fall. Like he doesn't close his eyes. He watches, on, he watches over me all the time. And that's the biggest element that brings me peace because something like this can happen and I'm not going to be shaken because my peace comes from God and my hope comes from who God is, no matter what's going on around me. Amen. And then, you know, in uh, Romans uh, 15, 13 says, now that God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and belief exactly. that yes. you may abound in hope through the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You Amen. Know, I think that's just wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. How about we, uh, you know, Eleanor, would you lead us in a prayer? And just uh, if anybody's listening and and they want to have that, you know, that hope and that that joy, you know, can we lead them? Definitely. In a prayer? Yeah. And before I close, I want to say thank you so much for doing this chat with me. Oh. It's so amazing to hear you share so many things about who God is and to share hope. So I'm so glad that we were able to do this today. Likewise with you, Eleanor. I really appreciate the time you took out. And, you know, we always have a good conversation whenever we talk. So I hope that we can do it again and, uh, you know, see what other topics we can hit on, you know, have fun with awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yep. All Bye. right. So I'm going to pray. Let's bow our heads. Um, dear Jesus, I bless you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, because you're, God, you're our Father and you care about us. And during this moment, God, no matter what's going around us, no matter the storm or how big it is, God, we know that you're here and you're with us. And God, you're caring about us so deeply that every single day you're fighting for us. Every single day you're giving us strength to make it through the day and you're filling us with the things that we need in order to survive. God, I just pray for 
any person right now that had lost hope based on what's going on around them, any person that's wrestling with fear or anxiety about tomorrow, Jesus, I just pray that because of who you are, because of your heart for us, because you have a plan for us to bring us a future and a hope, that Jesus, you touch those hearts that are wavering right now in their faith and they don't know what's going to happen. Lord, I just pray that you show up for all those people in this moment that are having a harder time than we might have with the pandemic. I just pray that God, you see them and that because of your heart as our father, that God, you help them with whatever it is that they're wrestling with. Thank you, God, because we know that this does not surprise you. And no matter what's going on around us, this does not surprise you. And it's, you're not shaken by it. Help us find a way to still trust you more and have faith in you more than ever before and be the church for each other. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Thank well, you so much. Yes, thank you. And uh, have fun building your deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I'm just, I'm washer and dryer swap, so. <laughs> All later. right. And until our next chat, see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye.